Greetings to City Action readers. I went through a, a bunch of different research directions after Doom 3 deciding what we wanted to do going forward. And the first six months or so was trying out all the all the little twitchy different things that we could do with things like parallax mapping and shaped specular highlights and different lighting models and different ways that we could combine and composite all these things together. And I spent quite a bit of time going through all of these saying, oh, this is kind of neat, this is kind of neat. But even all added together, I didn't think that they really added up to be something that you know, that really made this next generation stamp, made it look like something that you had never really seen before. Uh, so one of the directions that I had been uh, sort of thinking about for a long time, even pre-Doom 3, it was one of the decision directions I decided not to go when we started Doom 3, but that was this uniquely texturing the entire world on there. Because we've actually had, if you restrict yourself in certain ways, it's been possible to do this for quite some time. Uh, not necessarily in a completely flexible way that we're doing in Rage, but uh, some approximation of that. And while we were busy working on our aborted early title, what we were starting before we rebooted into Rage, uh, Splash Damage was working on enemy territory, and they were doing an outdoor render and things like that. And I suggested doing this unique texturing, uh, pointed mega texture on there for their outdoor surfaces. And I did a proof of concept demo for that and some early technology and just kind of handed it over to them. And they, they followed their path on that, doing some procedural terrain generation and other things. Um, and I didn't really think that they, there's this classic divide in, in so many areas of computer graphics between synthesis and data generation on there. And they followed, to some degree, a synthesis approach where they had these tools that would uh, synthesize the terrain and do, do things like that. And how do you, you mean by synthesize? I, you say, OK, we, this is the snow line, this is the tree line. I, let's go ahead and build, generate textures procedurally on right, there. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I've never been a really big proponent of that type of work. I prefer something that just says, let's Let's allow the designers to get in as much of what they really want to as possible. And I pushed this sort of stamping approach where you can go ahead and just put down 50,000 little drops of different, uh, different pieces on there. So uh, the splash damage stuff had some pretty good stuff out of it. It was limited technically in that it was just one enormous texture and it could be bent up and deformed into a terrain shape. But there were limitations with even if you made like a really steep sided wall or a deep canyon, you would start having certain uh, artifacts and something that might be close was blurrier than it should be because on the plane it was further away. Um, and while this was going on, I started developing a second generation of this technology that would allow us uh, to apply it to everything, characters, walls, uh, and, you know, indoor areas as well as the outdoor stuff on that. And that wound up being the direction that we settled on for this technology generation, where everything is done with this paged virtual texturing system. And we can have textures that are almost unlimited in size. Right now, they're set at 128,000 by 128,000, but you can have as many of those as you want. And in the wasteland outside, we have like 36 textures. They're not all that big, but we have just truly enormous amounts of texture data, and it is terabytes of source data that winds up getting set for this. So this has two primary advantages for us. Uh, the first one is the, the uniqueness, that when applied right on there, you really can look like you know, no other game before. And I think that's what we've got with Rage, where there's a lot of great looking games. There's no doubt that uh, the state of the art in gaming right now is very advanced, and there's lots of different ways to do good looking stuff. But the, you know, the sort of personality and level of detail and character that we can put into levels now are things that are that would be very, very torturous to, to put in in a classical way. Now, it's true that with the horsepower that we've got available now, you can do just about anything you want. If somebody gives you a photograph and says, put this in a game, you can photo texture it and draw models, and just about any game engine can go ahead and create just about any screenshot on there. So that's an interesting point that any given screenshot can be done in any competitive engine on there. But the capability about spreading that out instead of just saying, OK, we spent our entire resident texture budget on these textures for this scene, we have the ability to go ahead and run that through the entire world and have it deal with managing things uh, you know, as you move around it. So the, uh, 
the benefits there are that the tools that we've got, you'll probably see some people working with this as they're, they're moving around outside, laying down like additional levels of things. And there's, it's built up sort of out of three levels of things. They build a conventional model where you have surfaces with textures and they're kind of the standard, what everybody uses now with the diffuse bump specular. We have power maps and some other stuff that aren't all that important. But you can build up this base level model on there. And you could treat the engine naively just as you've got infinite texture memory. You just build every model with all the textures that you want and that would be the basic way of doing it. But you've then got this ability to lay on sort of gridded overlays of tiles that they use in the outdoors for kind of making a path through things where uh, Matt has some great demos that he did at Game Developers Conference about showing kind of before and after shots here. You take this base level and you add this other stuff on and then you go in and you can just have the source data for all of this is gigs and gigs of textures that the artists make on here, but they have like, okay, here's a road piece, here's a crack piece, here's a, a, a sand patch, and they just start layering these on top of each other. Here's a bullet hole in the wall, here's where something's broken off, and they can just keep leveling all this stuff on. It has absolutely no impact on performance. Where we could sort of do things like that, even in the previous engine, where you'd go and put stamps, you'd put a blood spat spatter here and a bullet hole here, but every one of those cost us both geometry and fill rate on there, so they had to be used sparingly. Now they have the freedom of, uh, there are literally tens of thousands of these individual stamps on any given level there, and if you look at like Wellspring back there on there, that whole courtyard area started out as one, one nice, simple, repeating tile texture on there and every bit of those uh, the puddles the uh, the road tracks all those are kind of layered in on top so it allows a level of creativity that wasn't really possible I mean you could do all of that previously you could say okay this courtyard we're gonna put down a 4k by 4k texture we're gonna go into Photoshop and we're gonna composite all of these pieces together uh, but now it's actually it's, you know, it's a minimal training required thing where we've taken artists, before the last time that we were demoing something dealing with Rage, we had a brand new artist that came in. It was like his second day and they, they sat him down here and said, okay, here's your palette of stuff and here's how you go ahead and drop these in the world. And basically said, just start making this area look better. You know, a little bit of feeling around and you know, lo and behold, the second day, we're getting useful results out of a brand new hire there because it's an intuitive artistic approach. Now they still complain about how it takes many seconds to go ahead and drop something down here. And some earlier technology that I had done was a lot faster, but the trade-offs here now, we do these 100, 121 samples on the shadowing there, it does radiosity gathering and it does all of this stuff. So you drop down one more thing and sometimes they twiddle their thumbs for a little bit while it goes and recalculates that block of texture data there. But it still allows this, you know, this interactivity there. And one of the, one of the artists hired for the Doom team wrote sort of a tutorial about some of this, and it was great because I could tell he really got what you could do with this, where he talked about using the stamping to tell the story of the area, where you start off with something and you say, well, there was a car broken down here for a long time, here's where, you know, the oil stain under, I, you know, where it leaked out here, and here's where people drop their cigarette butts, and here's where the water pools over here, and these are all the things that are layered on top of the basic gameplay experience. And the, you know, the game, you can still build, we don't do this enough yet here. We still fight internally about trying to block things out. But, you know, don't worry about how it looks. Just make the gameplay fun on here and then make it look better. We've got better tools for doing that, but we still don't have as much discipline in that regard as we could. It's all, all too easy for people to say, oh, I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time making it look really cool now when they, you know, they need to like, okay, don't even think about that until the gameplay is all done. Because it does mean whenever we do make a change now, of course, it, it, it hurts more when you throw out all of the extra work there. But that ability and that freedom to go and add, uh, add that level of detail, it's, it's easy to add. Uh, it has no impact on anything, which is really, really important, where you could wind up throwing you know, we expect as we grow the company here to a couple teams working together that we'll be able to shuffle resources around much more effectively where we can say, all right, now we're going to take all these Rage guys over here and we're going to help the Doom team go in and flesh out all of this area. And we can even have multiple people working on a map at the same time where one person can be stamping over here and one person over here and we can kind of build that in. So I think that's going to be a real uh, kind of labor saver, good resource that we have.